All right, so hi guys, quick update. Um, my microphone is officially dying. There's nothing I can do about it. So I have to go into my editing program, which I just recently found out about to raise the audio for everything. I've done everything. It's one of those things that when you have a uh, Blue Yeti, just after a year or two, they just conk out on you. But that's the price of, you know, buying a semi-cheap, nice microphone. So I will be getting a new one soon. I don't know exactly when, but that's going to be why. Also, I'm having a terrible, terrible, terrible allergy day while recording the audio for this. Because in California, when we get winter, it just decides to be a weird combination of wet and smoggy. And I don't know how else to describe it besides that. So if I sound very nasally and more out of it than normal, that is why. Now let us get out through the little shell real quick. Hi guys, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Feed the bot because YouTube is dumb. And honestly, since I've been doing that, it's been helping my algorithm and my reach so, so much. So every little bit helps. And if you want to follow me, all of my social medias are in my link tree link in my description down below. And let's, um, let's get into things to leave in 2020, because I feel like I've already done this video, but if I did earlier in the year, I'm gonna do it again, because I was watching Abby Williamson's video, and it really got me sitting down and thinking of, yeah, there's some stuff I really want to see that's gone, uh, you know, once this year is done. I know realistically with how the world works, uh, in the dumpster fire that is, it's probably not, but I think it's, you know, nice to have these, and my, I like when, I like watching when people do these, because it also makes me more self-aware of things that I may or may not have, like, really put much thought into, like, I know about it, but I didn't, if you understand what I'm talking about. A lot of us will, like, we'll go through something, and we'll be like, oh yeah, you know, that is something, but you need that little, like, little, little like, a little inspiration to, like, really let it sink in, and so that's just what I got on my, uh, my notes here. I'm on, like, the last couple pages of my paper ASMR, so I can't do my nice little flippy noise, but anyway, we're gonna go into the first one, and it's really big and really important, and I think that I hope that this changes so much in America, especially because it's where I live, and I live in California, which is also a giant dumpster fire, and I hate it here, but anyway, going out when you know you're sick, and if you have to go out, wear a mask. This is such a big thing. I'm going to go on this tangent real quick before I go into the other issues here. But hey, it's a Michi ramble. That's what you're here for. I grew up in a time, right? And I know people are always like, Ugh, don't be the back in my day person. But I had friends' moms think my mom was weird because my mom was at the time, I thought my mom was a germaphobe growing up because my mom would always get like actively mad when I'd have a friend come over that was sick or I'd talk about a friend that was in school sick or when she would be because my, my mom works in real estate when you know she would see clients and they just inclined to not tell her that she that they are sick you know my mom wasn't like a nasty germaphobe but I remember one time very clearly where I had a friend come over after school because you know it was it was the late 90s things were different um, pre six spiky round boy and pre everybody having a cell phone. Um, what ended up happening was my mom picked us up from school and took us home and she could tell very clearly that my friend was sick. Now I knew my friend was sick, but I was a wee little child in elementary school and I didn't know any better. And my mom got like really actively mad. And so my mom ended up just taking the little girl straight home, my old friend, and I remember being so embarrassed and my friend's mom being so angry at my mom because my mom said we can come over and play. And then my mom just changed her mind when my friend was very clearly sick. But again, me as a kid at the time, I thought my mom was overreacting. And I think right now is a really good example of how people like my mom were not overreacting. It was majority of America that was just like, eh. Because with Six Spiky Round Boy, it's really made me think too, because I used to be a very sick kid, okay? I used to be a very sick kid and I would get sore throats all the time. <laughs> People with tonsillitis, you know what it's like. Um, to where I would probably get, I would, I would say a sore throat at least, at a bare minimum, I would get it like, five to six times a year at a minimum. And it would be a point where I would be missing school because my parents wouldn't, didn't want me to go to school if I was sick. So my mom didn't want me to take other kids to s get other kids sick. 
And I always remembered my parents both saying something because a lot of like elementary schools and um, middle schools, I don't know if high schools do this, but they have like little awards in, in public school where it's like, and to so-and-so who never missed a single day of school. And my dad and my mom would always be like, that kid went to school sick. And a little kid me didn't, didn't really think about that. And I was like, well, what does that matter? And me now, I think it's a perfect example of that. Because I've also worked retail jobs, okay? Where I worked with food. I worked at a supermarket. And in our handbook, it said if you are sick because you are handling people's food, you call in and you don't go to work because you are literally bagging groceries, restocking groceries. You are literally infecting people's food, okay? And I called my manager once and I was like, hey, I've got this really bad head cold. It's it's really bad. Um, I'm, you know, expelling from both ends and I have a giant fever. Okay, you have a doctor's note? No, I just came down with this the other night. Okay, you gotta come into work or else you lose your job. So I did what every other adult did at the time and I chugged a bunch of fair flu, uh, the, I don't know why I said fair flu. Uh, but some of the, you know, cold medicine and I just toughed it out through my shift and I went home because at the time I, I, I thought I needed my job that bad. And I think about it now and I've had other friends, we've thought about it where how many people we got sick pre six spiky round boy, because remember how I said, remember how I said earlier that I got sick a lot as a kid, I would lie to my parents because I would miss a lot of school and after a while, especially if you're a kid that grows up getting sick a lot, you kind of just learn to live with it unless it's really, really bad. And I think about it how many times I'm like, oh God, how many times did I get my classmates sick? Because I just didn't tell my parents I had another sore throat. You know, I had another fever. How many teachers did I get sick? How many little kids did I get sick? How many like older people did I get sick because of the stupid mentality. And I really hope, it's probably not going to happen, but I can still hope that, you know, businesses do take that stuff more seriously. Will there be people who abuse it? Because that's what people always go. They're like, well, you can't just do that because then no one's going to go into work. It's like, yeah, there's going to be those assholes. They, they, those people exist. But think of the better good and wear a mask when you have to go out and you are sick. I remember seeing it in like I think it was anime for the first time because I was a giant weeb and being like that's weird why are people wearing masks when they're not like doctors or so and so and then I see that in other countries that's just normal and being polite because you don't want to get other people sick so yeah if you have to leave your house because obviously people do wear a mask and we should not be judging people for wearing a mask in that sense so yeah I don't care, okay, if you, you're a parent and you have little kids and your little kids are really, really sick because I had this happen to me constantly when I worked at a school, we'd have parents pump their kids full of cold medicine and I am not talking about the parents that have to go to work. That's a very, very different situation. There are some parents that literally they have to go to work and so because they have to go to work, they rely on school. Very different. Still shouldn't be that way. Still, I do not think it should be that way. But I knew that there were parents who just literally didn't want their kids home. So they were just like, all right, I'm going to pump this kid full of cold medicine or, you know, a, a bunch of other stuff and send them to school and then be surprised when, you know, they throw up on other kids and then we have to take them to the nurse's office and the nurse is like, wow, this little kid's got like 101 fever. Why are they in school? I didn't know they were sick this morning. Yeah, you did. Liar. You knew your kid was sick. You just didn't want to deal with it. Okay. Oh, it just, it makes me so mad at how many times we had kids that were vi nasty sick. Not little tummy aches, not a little snuffy nose. No, like they were sick coming. And I know I've been ranting about 10 minutes about this one, but oh my God, because of 2020, I've really had to reflect on that and just see that and see what it does to businesses and people and family that I want us to be more self-aware about that. If you're sick, tell your friends you're sick. That's another thing. You know, you're not being a jerk if you wanted to hang out with your friend after a long time and one of you got really, really sick and you're like, eh, eh, we'll, we'll risk it. No. Okay. Why 2020? Just don't risk it. Freaking call them. Explain. All right. It sucks, but if you're sick. Stay home. All right. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Jesus, charging people to read the goddamn news. Okay, so I 
have nothing against newspapers paying their authors. People need to make their bread and butter. I've never had any issue with that. My issue is when I want to go to the LA Times or the Sun or the New York Times or, you know, try to find a reputable news source, I have to pay them money or have so many ads on the screen and in the middle of the article too. Stop that. Don't put them in the middle of the article to where I literally can't read it. Oh, but you can pay X amount of money and you'll get a subscription to it. Uh -uh. Uh -uh, uh Uh-uh. I shouldn't have to. I'm okay with ads. I'm okay. Have ads. Have a video play before an article play. I will do that because I do agree that people should get paid for their hard work. But you are literally making it to where there is an entire generation of people who literally have to rely on Twitter for their news because they literally cannot read it from reputable news sources. Because, I'm sorry, in 2020, very few people have cable anymore. Like, I know they exist, and I know I'm probably going to get comments of like, um, excuse me, I have cable. Cool. Good for you. Literally, like, none of my friends have cable. Uh, a lot of my freaking parents and a lot of other of my friends' parents have ditched cable for internet media and streaming. I, not many people have cable the way it used to be. And I do agree people should get paid, but when you put it behind a paywall or... Or my big one, okay, is I'll be reading an article because I'm trying to keep up with the news. You know, be a good 28-year-old. And then I'll be in the middle of reading it, scroll, and a little pop-up will come. It's like, all right, you, you've got enough of your free news. Um, pay us to read the rest of the article. And it's never a small amount because it's one of those, like, because people also argue it's like, it's like a dollar. Don't bitch about it. Um, I shouldn't have to pay a dollar every single time I want to read the news, Okay. Like, I, I don't think it should come down to that. I don't think it should come down to literally my only news source is Twitter and I think, like, Yahoo News if I check up on it every now and then. Like, I, again, people get paid. People get their money. I, I have no issue with that. But don't put it in the middle of articles and don't put it to where they're half reading it and make it accessible to people to have news media that isn't just Twitter. Who? Oh, this is a heated list. But you know what? People like it when I rant, so... Here we go. The next one, number three, people too lazy to do their own research. This is a big one, okay? Google is free. I'm not the only one who said this, but I am so sick and tired of people. Now, granted, you don't need to do hours and hours of research, but um, I'm sorry. There's a lot of lazy people out there who... Uh, they'll see, that's why I don't watch drama and commentary channels anymore. I'm just, I couldn't handle it anymore. Is there'll be comments, people who are like, I didn't watch it. Someone give me the, the like cliff notes version of, of who we have to hate now. Oh, what, what did so-and-so do? I know I have Google and I'm messaging this on either a smart device or a computer where I can easily Google such and such name and what is going on. But no, I, I need someone to tell me because I do not want to do the research because I just want to know. Okay, then you Google it. You, you look it up. You, you, you watch videos on it. it. It's it's not that hard. It's it's not that hard. Um, I've I've had it happen to a ton of times. I've had I've had people come to me, like friends, and be like, "Oh yeah, uh, tell me about this so and so thing." I remember this so clearly. Oh my god, this is one instance that happened to me in real life. Okay, and this was about a year ago. My husband had a friend over. And he came up to me and he was like, hey, Michelle, uh, you, 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 you're like up to date with like internet drama and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I guess. And he's like, okay, what's going on with the, the James Charles stuff? And I'm like, uh, did, did you, did you not look into it? You being an adult and a grown ass man? Well, yeah, but you should know about it. Right. And I'm like, okay, but I haven't like, I legit haven't seen you in weeks and this drama has been going on for a while. So like. Why, why didn't you, a grown ass person, just, just, just Google it or, or go to YouTube and go to like any of the bazillion drama commentary channels that made videos on it. And then he got mad at me for not wanting to explain it to him. And 
Okay, maybe maybe I was maybe I was being a little bit of a bitch there, but I, I'm so sick of it. I'm sick of people not wanting to do their own research and form their own opinions. Like, it's okay to have differing opinions on things, but you should really do the research before you have a valid opinion on something. I I I don't think that should be I, I, I honestly feel like that should be common sense. And again, sorry if I'm being mean here, but I just don't see it. You know, when I see something that like, wow, that seems so messed up. I I, I Google it and, and I look it up to make sure that it's not people lying on the internet because people lie on the internet or they take something out of proportion. And then when my research has been founded, then I make my opinion on it. I don't just watch a single person's video or I ask someone in the comments of a video because I don't want to watch the video to be like, no, so someone explain it. Someone give me cliff notes. Because I, I, yeah. Uh, leave it. If, you, if you're interested in something, Google it. <laughs> okay? Because uh, li literally, like, it, it, it's not that hard. And, and in that same vein, you don't even have to go. And I like, I like The Right Opinion. You know, I love his stuff. But you don't have to go and watch, like, an hour-long The Right Opinion video. You can probably figure stuff out in, like, less than five minutes if you do basic research. Which... If you're on a website like YouTube or like Twitter or stuff like that, you 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 can do that. It's 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 really easy. Yeah. Same with going TikTok. Like I know TikTok can have interesting stuff on it, and I like TikTok. But like, it, it don't if if something seems really weird, they have a minute to explain something that's probably a really serious issue. So you should you should probably like Google it. Yeah. So so. Stop being lazy, and if you want to figure something out, go figure something out. Google it. That's that's another thing I want people to stop. Stop being lazy about. Now here's the difference, okay? I guess I should say this, so I'm not clear. If you did not know about something and you were watching a video on said thing, and you watch a video all the way through, and you form a video an opinion on that, but you're still maybe a little skeptical, a little opinionated, a little something, then Google it, okay? I'm not saying, like, oh, how am I supposed to know this if I didn't... Like, I'm not saying that. Obviously, there's stuff that everybody knows, you know, or doesn't know going on, and you have to figure it out on your own, or someone will tell you about it and you'll look it up. Just That's all I'm saying. If you're curious about something, look it up. Don't expect other people just to handhold you and explain it to you. All right, next one, which is, I think, a great one under that, is changing your opinions when more information comes forward. I, I am sick of these people who just dig their heels in the sand and they're like, nope, 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 because I'm going to look like a flake. I'm going to look wishy-washy if I, you know, have been given information and I just, I'm like, nope, nope, no, that's dumb. That's stupid. If you have an opinion on some, I, I think a perfect example is why I don't watch commentary in drama YouTube anymore, is everybody's waiting to just cannibalize each other and they're just waiting for stuff. But then you in the same boat have people who are like ride or die for certain people that they're like, oh yeah, um, I didn't know. I, I think a perfect example here is the Shane Dawson stuff. Okay. Um, sorry if you're a Shane Dawson fan. I used to be a fan. I came in dur during his documentary uh, phase of YouTube. I never liked his older content. I knew kind of of his problematic stuff back in the day. I I did not know to the extent. And then when everything came out about it, I was like, ooh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That is, ooh. That is disgusting. And there are a lot of people who were like that. There are, But there are some other people who are like, the, the past is the past. And Michelle, aren't, aren't you being a, aren't you being a hypocrite? For, uh, you know, because you always said that, like, people shouldn't look into stuff that's, like, um, you know, 10 years old. When you, he was an adult. Uh, it's also a little difference there. Um, he, he was an adult. A little, little, little different with that stuff. Um, you know, it's it's really different when... A uh, perfect example for me. 10 years ago, I was 18. <laughs> I was I was 18 10 years ago. And still in high school. And I did and said stupid stuff. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't say and do stupid stuff online. Because I was a teenager and I was dumb. 
And I also didn't have a massive following and make racist caricatures and very problematic content, you know, back in the day. I will say, I did say some problematic things back when I was a wee teenager and done. And I did grow and learn from that. Which is why, you know, I acknowledge, yeah, when I was a teenager, I was a little shit. Oh yeah, humor was pretty racist and edgy back in the early 2010s. And I think back to that and how that was normal. And me now is like, yeah, that's that's not good. I see what people were talking about. Like, I... I'm, I'm sorry. Like, there's a lot of, like, older movies that I loved as a teenager that I rewatch now and I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's kind of, tra- ooh, that's, like, really transphobic. Oh, that's really homophobic. Oh, that's really racist. Oh, how, how was that just finger quote okay back then? It wasn't. It was just, like, hidden under that guise of edgy humor. And that's a big difference than something like that, you know? You can have differing opinions on people when your opinions change. Same for friends, okay? I always talk about in the past how I had really bad friends because I just let stuff slide. Really bad stuff that I'm ashamed of now. And that's why I no longer have those people associated in my life. So you're allowed to change your opinion if facts have been presented. The difference is if the facts are there and there are multiple witnesses and accounts and evidence that the facts are true and you're just like, no. No. Ride or die. No. Facts don't know them. Don't know. No. In the same vein, uh, when you see someone who was like a diehard stan or a diehard something or something and they find out something terrible about someone maybe they know, they've worked with, something like that, especially on social media and stuff, And they've come out and been like, wow, I didn't know this. I am so sorry. I'm no longer associated with that person or my opinions have changed in this matter. And you should let them grow and and be okay with that because as human beings, we grow and change. Like I said, 10 years ago, Michi back then, drastically different than Michi now. Oh my God, completely. And that's something that comes with that. And the same thing is it's taking accountability for your actions. Um... You d- don't just don't just blindly sit by and be like, well, well, I don't know. Um, that was in the past, and I, and I, 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 it was a different person. It was a different. It's like no, you have to. It's like no, I did that. I was wrong. I don't do that now. I apologize. It's not that hard. I mean. Uh, you, 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 there's, there's no reason to stick your note, your, your head in the sand with certain things. I think another good example is like when I say, talk about Harry Potter, you know, if you're an adult, if you're an adult, I give kids a tiny pass. They're not as stupid as people think, but I give them a smaller pass. But if you're an adult and you're a Harry Potter fan and then someone's like, oh, well, you know that the author is so-and-so and then you you... What you have to do as the adult is be like, yes, not like, well, um, actually, she should be allowed to, like, say her very terrible opinions. I think that we should, in a way, you are right, but you are wrong. Yes, you are you are allowed to say your problematic ideas and opinions, but uh, you are completely open when you do that for other people to, you know, say the same stuff back and, and critique that and talk about that because that's how freedom of speech goes. Yeah. You know, it's you, you're not making excuses for random people. You, you, you just... If you find new facts and information, you are allowed to change your opinion and, and be okay with that. But you got to acknowledge the past in that same sense. So that's another thing I want to leave in 2020. All the spicy, ranty hot takes. All right, what's the next one I have? <laughs> All right, it's the last one I wrote down, but it's also pretty good. And it's, I think it's a good way to to ease up my ranting and my and my anger. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And it's... I got this one from Abby Williamson because this, this her video was where I like really wanted to like write this down. Um... And it's RSVPing to events that you want to go to. Say yes to more things, even if you don't exactly want to. It's very different if you're going to have a bad experience. Like, if you have a very, you know, very toxic family and your family's trying to force you to go on this trip that you just know you're going to have a bad time, that's... If you can, don't go into that. That's 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 a different situation. But it's like, mm, you had a friend want to hit you up out of nowhere and be like, hey, you want to go hang out? And you were just like, mm, you know, I kind of want to be a potato today. No, go see your friend. Okay, after 2020 and after all this, we need human contact. Go see your friend. 
Go to that movie. Go do that random thing that you weren't expecting to do. But don't say... Don't, like, say you're going to do something and then not do it. This was really big that I would see people do, and it would very clearly hurt, and it hurt me as well, where we... I'll use a party as an example, right? I would be throwing a birthday party or a Christmas party, some sort of party, okay? And then I'd have somebody be like, oh, yeah... I'll go. And then out of nowhere, be like, "Mm, can't go. Be like, okay, that sucks. But then I would see on social media, they went to like Disneyland or something, or they would go to like, you know, something else that, um, instead of just telling me flat out, like, Hey, um, I don't want to go to your party. I want to go to Disneyland. That sounds better than just being like, I'll go. Then no, I, 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 I can't. And then, you know, finding out other ways. No, don't leave your friends up like that. It's not a cool move. Uh, you know, and multiple other things like that, you know, take that discord call, play those co-op games, watch a show together, just do more because I sure know I am. Once everything's lifted and we get the vaccine and people are better and it's safe. Oh, you bet. I'm actually going to go out and do stuff again and with my friends. And every time that little voice in my head's going to be like, "Mm, you know, maybe not. No, I'm doing it because, oh, I want adventures, I want memories, and this year is going to be a memory that I wish I could forget. So anyway, there's that. That's what I want to leave in 2020. Hopefully you liked my rant, you liked my ramble. Um, Actually, ironically enough, um, I think the next video is also going to be a rant uh, that I've been uh, writing notes down for. So you might be getting that tomorrow or the day after, depending on what my schedule is going to be for Artemis. But thank you guys so, so much for listening. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon patrons for making this possible. I love you all so, 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 so much. And as always, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.